someone says to me, all religion is true, I ask them, is fundamentalist Christianity a religion? And they say, yes. And as I say, fundamentalist Christianity is true, because it's a religion and all religions are true. And then I'll say, fundamentalist Christianity teaches that all other religions are false. So if all religions are true, fundamentalist Christianity is a religion, or it says it must be true, it teaches that all religions are false. Therefore, it must be true that all religions are false. Yeah. And if they follow your line of reasoning, they get quite, you know, get quite, quite, quite sort of agitated with it. They say, no, it's wrong! And say, so all religions are true. Right? And so then they have to start saying, well, some aren't, some aren't. So they which ones? <coughs> And it ends up being, well, those that don't say other religions are true. And I say, okay, so basically you're a pluralist, and the only thing that's true are pluralist religions. So you're not pluralist. Really not. You're no different from the fundamentalist who says, all the pluralists are really true. Right? So, so it's pointing this sort of line of argument out to them and just um, giving them a certain absurdity of what the position is taking. And similar to that statement, we hear sometimes from atheists that they are now absolutes. Yeah, that's right. That statement itself is self-defeating. That's right. Yeah, it's a self-defeating argument is often very common. You know, um, you know, you surprisingly have, surprisingly have a common man. I mean, I saw one atheist in the debate one time stand up and say as well, you know, one, one, one thing that atheism does teach is that my opinion is just my opinion. My views are better than anyone else's. So it's like, so you say, atheism is like the opinion of everyone else's. Obviously, say, no, it's true, yeah, it's false. Okay, so the reality is all of us accept that our positions are true. All of us, well, we wouldn't accept them if we thought they're false, right? Um, and all of us accept that there are large numbers of people who disagree with us. So it's a fact of life that anybody is going to take a position that people disagree with. It shouldn't be um, apologetic about that. It may should give us a little bit of humility that we might be wrong. But just because somebody disagrees with us doesn't mean that we should give up our words and agree with Um, yes and no, I think it depends on the context. I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we know the truths about Christianity by direct revelation. Okay, I'm not a person who believes, I'm not one of these people who goes around the time and prove it with science. I think that's actually a statement of approach. I'm going to cut that out from that. So I think the role of personal revelation and experience of God is vital in the Christian life. Um, but, you know, so, so that's important and that, that can be useful in a certain context. The problem is if you, you'll come up against some skeptics and say, oh, well, so what if you personally believe, what if you personally believe, you whatever, you know. Um, so there are some people who, if you take that line, will um, take you as saying, oh, it's all based on emotion, not fact. So it's really a case of both and. You need to accept your personal um, experience and revelation of God and have confidence in that. But then you also need to use that confidence and boldness to um, respond to objections and challenges in a critical way. It's a case of, of, of taking both into account. One of the things I think is a problem with the uh, evangelical church in New Zealand is you have this kind of false dichotomy where people think that either you are really emotional about your faith and you have a kind of devotional life and you have um, encounters with God and you read the scriptures and you feel God speaking to you through it, or you have a dry intellectual life. You know? And what that does is it means that Christians who are more intellectual can't relate to the church culture in the world. It means that Christians who, who are at university studies and studying things increasingly find themselves offside with the church because they just feel like these people don't relate to them. And it reinforces in people's minds that Christians are just all about emotion with no basis for their faith. You know? um, at the same time, dry intellectualism is often challenged by personal devotion. I mean, I had a, I can tell you a story about this. I had a guy when I was in youth group years ago, I was in a, a Pentecostal group many years ago. Um, and, um, he used to turn up just to argue with the people in the youth group about how stupid they were. He used to turn up and say something like that. And he used to drive me nuts. And I used to sit there and just discuss things with the hours. And um, what actually was happening was he was one of these guys that was very, very smart. He ended up doing masters in mathematics. Um, but he was missing something in his personal, existential, emotional life. Um, the problem was, and he could see that in the Christian faith, and he wanted to grasp it. 
problem was is he thought that it would be a little unseat to him was stupid. So there was that kind of this, this emotional yearning in him, but also this intellectual hunger really because it's totally subjective and emotional. Now I had this conversation with him and years later when I was doing a PhD at Tygo in Bramley, and he said that he'd gone to Australia and had some encounter where he suddenly realized God was real. And everything I'd said to him enabled him to appropriate that encounter and make it real in his life. And he came back and studied theology at the time. You know, and that was a case where, because he was so dry intellectual, he had lost any sense of emotional or, or, or life. But because he was intellectual, he also couldn't embrace that aspect of life because he thought he was caught up in this dichotomy between the head and the heart. And so running into people who had both was actually very attractive to him. So I think it's a case, as I've said before, both and not either or. And part of the problem with, with the church today is that they see it as an either or thing. So they said, oh, someone has intellectual doubts. All you need to do is to tell me a personal testimony. And uh, they can't argue with that. The reality is they can. You know, they can raise objections to that in time. Um, and, you know, that has its place, but the two need to, need to work together with it. There's a terminology thing too. Um, what words do you use? And right near the beginning, you were talking about sane people. What I, I would sort of have to say, what do you think a sane person is? And then coming back to the right back near the end here, you said something about um, that Christianity is a religion. So I would want to know well, what you think a religion is, because Christianity may not be a religion at all. Well, sure, and a lot of it depends on how you, you how the word religion is defined. Yeah. And you're quite right that sometimes um, there are terms that are loaded, you know. Um, people often, it's often very important when you're discussing someone to make sure that when they use a term, that you actually understand what they mean. For example, I used at one point when I talked the term fundamentalism. Now that's a really good example because that's one of those terms that no one ever defines. And because no one ever defines, they're out to, to play all kinds of tricks with that term. So for example, can someone say a fundamentalist is someone who believes in the Bible, in which case I'm a fundamentalist. Or they can mean a fundamentalist is an anti-intellectual bigot, of course, in which case I'm a fundamentalist, right? Um, but which, what's the meaning of the term fundamentalist? So there's this blanket term, are you a fundamentalist? And then you say, well, I believe in the Bible, yes, then you've confessed to being an anti-intellectual bigot. And if you say no, you've confessed about the Bible, right? Um, so you say, well, what do you mean by that term? And if I say, oh, someone believes in the Bible, yes, they're not fundamentalists. But now, make sure they're consistent with that term and they're never allowed to use it another way. If they do, you say, well, hang on, you define the term as fundamentalism and someone believes in the Bible. That's what we're talking about. Why does me believe in the Bible when I'm an anti literature bigot? Can you articulate what is it about belief in the Bible that necessitates that? So, so I think you're right about the use of the term. I'm, I'm using term religion because that is in common discourse how Christianity is seen. And you could be into a discussion about, you know, a discussion about that. Second thing about using terms that I think is important is that you've got to realise that evangelicals have developed a subculture where there are certain terms and certain um, phrases we use which outsiders don't use and consider really weird. And sometimes using those terms can actually put them off or can actually they can actually interpret very differently to the way you interpret them to it. So um, one of the things that I have done, I did when I was in university, is I started purging myself of all evangelical subculture terms. And then when I came back to the church, I thought, oh my goodness, now I've got to readapt that document again. But, um, you know, for example, I never used the term sin at university. I always used the term unethical or wrong. And the reason for that is, is that the idea of sin, they have this idea of this Bible thumping preacher that goes on about sin, right? There's just this kind of stereotype of what have. So sometimes you call it sin, right? Well, in their mind, they're like, oh my goodness, this was Bible thumping nonsense. But you know, I was working in a philosophy department where I was studying ethics, and some of it's unethical. That's wrong. You know? And then people would kind of get what they're talking about. I said, well, why do you think it's wrong? I said, I think it's wrong, it's got to be wrong. So I think you can't believe it, you know? And what I've done is I've articulated my belief that that was something to them, without conjuring up an image that was going to shut down the conversation. So I think you're right about. You need to be careful about the way people use terms. And so when someone says, this question of religion, say, so, well, just a second, I can tell you, what do you mean by religion? What do you mean by the term? Um, and get them to articulate it. Um, I hope that answers your question. 